And so my first thought was to mount it on my bench grinder. But you can see here, after I've taken the stone off, that the shaft is pretty long and that disc is fairly thin. So I looked around my shop for something to make a suitable spacer out of, and I found this pulley. It's actually a little bit too long, and it doesn't let enough of the shaft stick out to support the hub of the wheel. So I'm gonna try to counter bore the other end a little bit using a step drill. And here you can see I'm trying to hold up my fingers, and of course that never works out well. So I got out the channel locks and I got a better grip on it. Now I don't have to drill this out very deep because the hub of the wheel is not that thick. And when I slide it onto the shaft, you can see that the right amount is sticking out on the front there. Now the next problem with the pulley is that it's not flat. So I'm gonna temporarily bolt it onto the shaft and then set up a tool rest so that I can turn a little bit off to make it flat. Of course, I can't get to the center of the pulley because the nut's in the way. So I've taken it over to my wooden vise and I'm actually gonna chip the rest of the aluminum out of there with that chisel I use for turning. And then to tune it up a little bit more, I'm just gonna rub it on some sandpaper here on the top of my table saw. Now that's probably not perfectly flat. So I slipped it back onto the shaft and I put the wheel on as well. But we can see here that it's not perfect and I really didn't expect it to be. I mean, this is a pretty low precision machining operation here, but I figure I can get it close enough by shimming it out. So I marked it where it's furthest away and then I put a paper shim in there and I checked it again. And that's a lot closer, but it still could be a little bit better. So I added another shim and that improved it to the point where I think it might be okay. There's still some play there, but I think the disc will flex enough to compensate for that. So I finished that up by getting an old router bit and doing a little bit of grinding on that. And it seemed to work well, and the router bit did definitely feel a lot sharper. So that brings us up to today, you know, months later. The grinder set up, it's not really that stable. So I figured maybe I should try it on the table saw instead. The shaft on the table saw is the same size as the one on the grinder. All I need to do is put the wheel directly on there. Now, when I looked at it with the dial indicator, it's out a little bit. The only problem is with the dial indicator is that you have to put it on the abrasive and the abrasive will actually wear out the tip of the dial indicator and change your readings over a few turns. But I'm gonna be using a pencil instead. And what the pencil will do so it will make a mark where the disc is furthest away, and then I can shim the opposite side with paper to correct it. And that way I should be able to get it close enough to wobble free to make it efficient for grinding the blade. Now as for grinding the blade, I could set something up here to make this more precise. But since I'm not really taking a whole lot off the face of each tooth, I'm just gonna eyeball it freehand. And if I get a couple more sharpenings out of this blade, I'll be happy with that. Now I've had this blade for about four years and I'm pretty sure I've had it sharpened professionally at least twice already. And I could do that again here. I could bring it to the place that I have these blades sharpened, but it's not exactly around the corner. I have to drive something like 80 kilometers round trip to get it there. And then I'd have to wait at least a week because that's generally how long it takes for them to send it out and get it back in. And then I would have to do that 80 kilometers round trip again to go get it and bring it back here. So I figure if I have the technology to sharpen it here in my shop, that would be great. I noticed while sharpening it that there are a few teeth that are chipped, but I don't think that's gonna have a major impact. Some of you probably saying, well, what about the top of the tooth, John? Are you gonna sharpen that as well? And while it would be better if you sharpen both the top and the face, it's not strictly necessary because what you wind up with is a sharp point if you just sharpen the face. And the only thing left to do is to try it out and see how it cuts. But first I'm gonna clean it, which is something I should have actually done before I sharpened it. And this will get rid of the resin that's on the sides of the tooth. And that alone will make a big difference in making the blade seem more sharp. Anyway, I don't have any ash out here to cut, but I do have a piece of hard maple. 
that was previously cut with this blade and you can see the burn marks on the side here and I'll run that through and see how that looks. Okay, that's quite a difference. It cut through that no problem. There was a little bit of binding at the first of the cut there. And of course my table saw is a little bit underpowered anyway, but it whipped right through the rest of the cut.